Well, a very good morning and uh, welcome to the topical discussion. With me, Simon Kagwanjala. And uh, the focus again is uh, on what's been happening lately. Uh, uh, the opposition has had quite a fair share of bad spotlight emanating from the ongoing Uganda Parliament exhibition that is exposing quite a number of um, irregular transactions happening in Parliament that border on lavishness, on lavish expenditures. Um, this has prompted quite a number of things. A crisis that is now brewing within the national inter-platform as uh, the deputy president is being put to task to step down after being exposed in a 500 million service award scandal. Well, he's been given three options. Either to return the money, step down, and apologize to the country. He's not done any, and he's also come out fighting. He says this is part of the witch hunt that has been ongoing for a while. Well, where is this headed? It's one of the questions that we should be asking this morning. And my guest is the leader of opposition in parliament, Honorable Joel Senyonyi, who also happens to be the spokesperson of the National Inter Platform. Good to have you and a very good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. I imagine you're putting up with a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. having just stepped in office and this exhibition is coming up. I like pressure. I like pressure. The best of me gets to come out when uh, there's so many things throw uh, thrown at me and, and so on. You know, there are people who thrive under pressure. Uh, so, so I like pressure. I like a challenge. So how much, how much are you contending with now? A um, lot, but uh, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's what I've got to deal with. I knew that uh, this was not going to be a cup of tea. I went for it nonetheless. Don't you find it rather weird that mm -hmm. um, your party, the National Interplatform, <coughs> is acting on just reports that are coming from a group of elites who've come up with this exhibition, yet there were legislators in the House who knew these scandals as they unfolded back in the day. Was there a conspiracy of silence? Who are those legislators who knew this? You were part yeah, of the yeah. House. You were in the House. Some of these scandals that are being exhibited now mm. happened either last year or the previous year. Well, firstly, <coughs> um, I'm hoping we'll not re reduce this discussion to just our commissioner. We'll touch that because it's part of the issue, but I'm hoping that uh, we'll have a wider discussion about parliament generally. But now that you have begun there, we can knock that off. You're saying it is weird mm. for a party to begin to crack the whip. Kagwanjala Simon, what is weird about taking action against something problematic? No, social media. Mm. You, you're just jumping on what's happening in social media. These evils have been happening in the past. You mm. want to tell me that the party doesn't have mechanisms to investigate these things, even well, before they leak in the media? Good enough, there is now adequate evidence, wherever it has come from. Uh, some of what you see in the media has been gotten elsewhere and, and, and so on. What's important is that uh, there's evidence about certain things. In the past, there's always been a challenge of evidence. Uh, people are picking money here and that kind of thing. You can't get a good grip of it. But now there's proper evidence. You should be actually applauding us for taking action because there's evidence. Because if we had not taken action, you would be, of course, of course not you, other people. Uh, other people would be condemning us for not taking action even when there's evidence. So now that there is clarity about a couple of things, it's a good thing that we are taking action, is it not? Why of all people are you zeroing in on mm. Mutuga, yet there mm. have been earlier reports of MPs who got 100 million, 50 million, 40 million? Let's, let's split these issues, yeah? Let's begin with the 50, 100 million and so on. Um, there's been a lot of talk, including recently, last week, when we hear that uh, people go and pick money from wherever. The challenge is there's no tangibility. Even when, I mean, I don't know if you've reported that parliament before, there's a lot that happens in that house, exchange of uh, money and, and so on. We have said, whoever can avail us some evidence, please <coughs> do avail us. 
and then challenge us when we don't take action. But I've also cautioned my colleagues, several, including yesterday. I said, you know, you need to be careful, eh? Because traps are being set for you. How do you go to someone's house to pick money? And you think there are no cameras recording you? Are you, are you crazy? Or wherever it is that you pick the money from anyway. And I told them, you see, now that we have begun to pile up pressure regarding all the financial impropriety in Parliament, you might very soon see people coming out to say that, ah, but you see, I'm not the only guilty one. Here is evidence. This one picked money from my home, even this one, even this one, and that kind of thing. So don't think that whoever is giving you money is excited to do it. It is a trap. And uh, hopefully that evidence will come through at some point, And then we we'll be able to take action. Do you imagine this exhibition is coming up in good faith to check parliament? Regardless, what's important is that issues are coming out that are factual. And I've heard people say, you see, some of the people talking don't like parliament. Even you, Honorable Senyonyi, there are people you don't like and that kind of thing. <sighs> come on, don't, don't divert from the critical issues, yeah? When you're being asked something serious, respond to it. Don't create a diversion eh? uh, to scapegoat the issue. So it does not matter whether you think it's not done in good faith. What matters is the issues that are being raised. Can they be responded to? That's the important thing. But you don't scapegoat and say, you see, this one died like me. I'm seeing sugar on your lips. Mm. And I'm saying you've stolen sugar. Ah, you say you don't like me and that kind of, you, you first respond to the sugar we are seeing on your lips. Mm. And then we can determine the liking or the, you know, the dislike, because it does not matter. Are you being selective in your persecution? <coughs> Take, for instance, there have already been reports, and some legislators have come out to own up and say, mm. yes, I took the money, but you've not reprimanded them. As harsh as you're doing on Vuga. Actually, we have in the past. The Honorable Tebande Kechas, the Bali County Member mm. of Parliament, admitted to mm -hmm. having taken this money. Mm -hmm. He was a shadow minister for fisheries. We relinquished him of that role. Not immediately. It was immediate. It was immediate. In fact, it's the Honorable Mpuga who did it because he was the leader of the opposition and he's in charge of the shadow cabinet. So he was relieved of his duties. That's on record. So when you say this is selective, I, I don't understand what you mean. I mean, the, the, the kind of tone in mm -hmm. which you're trying to reprimand Mpuga for whatever he did without even taking him through due process. Take, for instance, mm -hmm. has Nek ever sat to make a resolution asking him to step down? Or it was an informal meeting that made this resolution? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you said. Are you a lawyer by any chance? No. No. I okay. I'll, I'll help you with the issues to do with law. Now that you're talking about due process, and I'm not sure you have a full understanding of it. Let's, let's now not, you know, uh, Nick pick this issue. Let's get to the bottom of it. Um, and then we'll get to how we are dealing with it. The genesis was um, a commission meeting sitting, having five people therein present. The Speaker of Parliament, the Leader of the Opposition, and three NRM commissioners. Honorable Solomon Siruani, Honorable Prosi Akampudira, and the Honorable Esther Akoyo Chan. And they determined, no, we need to reward ourselves. For doing what? I don't know. They had been in office for a few months. How do we reward ourselves? They lock 500 million, 400, 400, 400 to the other commissioners. Um, they pass it and they say it is with immediate effect. That's number one. Number two, it is personal to holder. There's so many issues that are problematic with that. Let me just remind you a little. In 2017, the six billion shilling handshake to 42 government officials who had saved government about 2.4 trillion shillings in arbitration in London. You remember that incident? Yes. It was investigated by Kosase. That report was read by the then vice chairperson of Kosase, who is now the speaker, the right honorable Anita Anita Monk. And among the things, and the videos are beginning to come out, she condemned, number one, the solicitation of an award, that you can't sit and solicit for an award, determine what it is, and you determine who gets to partake of that award. And Parliament passed a resolution, number one, for that money to be returned, number two, for the IGG to prosecute those fellows. It was problematic then. 
even according to parliament standards. <laughs> it's even more problematic now. And the reasoning was, you people are government officials, you earn a salary for, what, for doing this work. You don't deserve anything extra. Yes, you have saved government money, but you are paid to do that. Fast forward. These people paying themselves 500 million, 400, 400, 400, having been a few months in office, they earn a salary, they earn allowances for the offices they occupy, law commissioners. There's a gratuity set for them mm. afterwards as members of parliament and so on. So you're saying you're rewarding yourselves, number one, for what? At least the other ones of the six billion Chinese, uh, uh, you know, handshake had done something, even though we're saying it's problematic. But they had saved government 2.4 trillion Chinese. But we're saying, no, you are paid to do that. That's your job. What had these ones done to award themselves this extra? It's problematic. Number two, <coughs> even when you read the Leadership Code Act, Section 9, it, it points it out very categorically. You cannot see it and you award yourselves money from the Consolidated Fund. Number three, when, when we had a meeting, uh, one of the things I asked the Honorable Mpuga, I said, uh, What kind of meeting you was see, this? Number one, the meeting that uh, we first had was a meeting of senior leaders within the party. We told the Honorable Mpuga, we respect you as a senior leader. We, we didn't want to first throw this issue even at NEC, because NEC has a, is a composition of many other people. Mm. We said, you are the senior leader, let's first, you know, handle your senior leader. So it's a meeting that had all the deputy presidents, of course, uh, myself, it had the secretary general, it had um, uh, members of parliament, senior leaders, the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi, the Honorable Namboze, the Honorable Segona was invited, but he was unable to make it. <coughs> and we said now as senior leaders, let's first discuss this issue here in this setting. Number one, he conceded that this did happen, yes. He also acknowledged that this was wrong. And in that very meeting, he apologized. Of course, later on, I saw him denying that. And then people began to say, but hey, we were in the meeting. The deputy president spoke out of Northern Region. The deputy president, Western Region, spoke out and said, ah, our colleague, don't, don't mess it up any further. We were in the meeting. We apologize. So don't, you know. Um, and, and in that meeting, <coughs> we asked him, we said, uh, the good enough, you acknowledge this is wrong. The right thing to do is for you to step down. You will be seen as even more honorable uh, because even you acknowledge that this was not right. Um, I, I did ask in that meeting, I said, firstly, you, a trap was set for you, our colleague. What was the agenda of the meeting and in the um, first place? Just a second. A trap was set for you, and you fell in the trap. Mm -hmm. I told him, if this had been institutionalized in a sense, you would be covered in a sense. If it's institutionalized to say that, okay, going forward, this is what's going to happen. You know, it becomes law of sorts. The quarrel would be about, yeah, but how do you guys, you know, allocate yourself this kind of money, even future lobs and so on. It's a lot of money. But at least there would be a cover. But now you're saying, no, this is just for us. So I asked him, what happened to, let's say, your predecessors? And the response was, now you who is new in the office, you'll also negotiate your own. I said, okay, so let's imagine... I appease whether it be the speaker or whatever the powers that be that decide. Meaning I can negotiate for even two billion shillings. So traditionally, that's, that's been the modest. That's problematic. No, it's the first time this is happening. Okay. Because all the other former leaders of the opposition have come out to say they've never gotten such money. It has never happened. Honorable Winnie Kiza told you, in fact, the thank you she got from parliament was a calendar and a plate. And she's not complaining. She's saying, that's what I got as a thank you. And that's all right. So it has never happened. But now the first time it's happening, you're saying it's just for us. Whoever comes will negotiate their own. It is wrong that you sit and say, now let's negotiate. Let me negotiate what I want. For what exactly? The other 2.4 trillion that was saved by the 6 billion shilling handshake people were saying it is wrong even when they saved government money. What have you done to okay. award on yourselves this money? Honorable now you ask, mm. what was the meeting about? The agenda. Was there an agenda? The agenda was this very issue because our leader was caught in this situation. It's out there. Let's sit and talk about it. And in that meeting, we said, you know what? Our advice to you is that, that you step down. Good enough, you have acknowledged it did happen. Number two, um, you have acknowledged it is wrong. Number three, you have apologized in that very meeting. Now that you have, step down. It does mm -hmm. not make you any less of a man or a leader. It actually emboldens you, and people get to respect you a lot more. Because this is problematic.
of course, afterwards, we did see uh, denials about a couple of things. He uh, issued a statement. Yeah. You know, it's also good that we be honest as leaders. Um, it's very important. Yeah. He also said, um, I've not received any of this money. I'm waiting for the first installment. Mm -hmm. Last week, the spokesperson of parliament, Chris Obore, was on TV, and he conceded that all these people, the Honorable Mpuga, Honorable Sirwanyi, Akampuri Raposi, and uh, Afoye Chan received this money. Of course, we had already gotten information. They had already received the money. And you are saying, now, why do you also want to lie about that small detail? It's, it doesn't make you look good. Okay, I because now even the spokesperson of parliament is acknowledging the money was paid. Essentially, so w will this have been an internal matter? Did it even warrant a statement mm. in the first place? No, because we agreed and said, um, please do this. And said, uh, give me a day. Let me consult my family and yes. so on. I'll uh, be able to handle the situation. When that did not happen, we said, okay, so... No, but you Let's issued a statement that very evening. Was it appropriate? It was not that evening. It was the following day evening. Not that day. Because we waited for the day he had asked for to elapse. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't hear anything. We said, anyhow, the public, we have a duty to the public because they're asking us questions. They're saying, you NUP, previously, you said you didn't have any evidence about your MPs who picked money. Now there's evidence. What are you doing about this situation? So we have a duty. So, so what, was what did you seek to achieve in issuing this statement? The issue is not just about the statement, Simon. Don't reduce it to just a statement. No, it's, 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 is in being it's accountable. It's it is in being accountable to the public to say something wrong has been done by one of our leaders. He has acknowledged as such. Okay? This is the right thing to do. This is the action that we are taking. That you people are always demanding of us. Because mm. like I'm saying, when people pick money, you say, ah, but you guys are not taking action. And we say, but you see, um, we want to take good action. Like we took action against Devandeke because he admitted. We relieved him from the shadow cabinet. Okay? Um, the same thing we are asking of uh, our colleague. So once there is evidence, you're duty bound to take action. Because you'd be the same people. Well, not you again, like I've said. Because you, you have your interests. Which is okay. But at least other people would be asking us, why are you not taking action against this person? There is overwhelming evidence. And they were asking all those questions. And we said, good enough, this person has even acknowledged. Um, now, after that meeting of seniors and all that happened eventually, we said, okay, we did not want now to throw this out there too much. Let NEC also handle. Here, we were asking you as colleagues. We requested him and said, you know what, the right thing for you to do is to step down. Mm. Now that he's not done that, we said, okay, let the matter go to NEC. That same NEC. Ordinarily, listen, isn't it listen, in mm. That same NEC is the one that approved him and seconded him to be leader of the opposition. That same neck is the one that approved him and seconded him to be commissioner of parliament. So what were you asking there? Ordinarily, isn't it neck that is supposed to sit fast mm -hmm. and make a resolution of that kind? Not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. You see, we can have a, a, an interaction, and that's why I said, we said as seniors first, eh? let's first have this discussion. We may not even need to go through the very formal processes of NEC and that kind of thing. As senior leaders, let's treat this person as senior leaders at that level. Before, Because like I said, no, NEC is a composition of so many different people. No disrespect to them. But sometimes you want to handle a senior colleague a particular way. Say, let's first have this chat as senior leaders. And good enough among the senior leaders, he acknowledged and he did apologize. Do you think you're being civil towards... Honorable Mpuga, Simon uh, look, look at some of the remarks that have been made by your principal. Take, for instance, at the burial of the late Romwa, uh, the principal came out and said his deputy had picked money from Museveni to come and destroy the National Inter platform. You think that was in good taste? I and there is a video doing rounds on this. I was, I was looking for the topic for which I was invited because now you, you want to make it a Mpuga issue. I think I've explained what I have regarding that issue. The topic I was invited for, Parliament, just listen, Parliament expenditure bonanza yeah. is the institution losing the call for accountability. I'd like us to broaden this. Uh, we we're, have we're getting there. The we're getting there. We're Mpuga getting there. And how inconsidered and how problematic this was. And again, um, we okay. don't have Do any problem with him. the statements him that have been flying in the aftermath of mm. the party decision are in good taste? Well, we are saying this is wrong. And we have taken, taken the action that we have taken as a party, and we don't have any apologies. Okay? My hope is that as we move and begin to talk about parliament generally, I don't know if you'll ask me also that now that I'm talking about the Speaker of Parliament and the institution, 
Do I also not like her? And all these other different people? No, I don't think I can drag to that end. Yeah, so then why you, you know, drag no, me? Why, why but do you but think that when the, we the ask Mpunga issue is for very accountability... Because you're looking at a, a principle of a party. Yeah, and actually it's more serious because this is one of us. We are saying... So do you know how delicate it is? If charity begins at home, if the NRM doesn't want to take action against its commissioners, for us who want to take action as a party... And by the way, I want to appreciate the Deputy Secretary General of the NRM, the Honorable Rose Namayanja. She did come out and condemn this distribution of money to these commissioners and the law to themselves. Condemned her very own NRM commissioners and said, this is wrong. You guys covered the story. I saw it here on NBS. She said, this is wrong, and we are going to take action as a party. I hope they will. Okay? But we might not be responsible for the NRM commissioners. They were sent by the NRM. We are responsible for our person whom we sent as a party, and we are duty-bound. Because the, the public will not blame us for not taking action against the NRM commissioners. They are not within our reach. We yeah, didn't again them, do you know what it but takes? they require us. Do you know what it takes to recall a commission of parliament? I, I, I know that law very yes. well, even as a lawyer. And that's Article why I am ten. saying yes. we have asked our colleague to resign. It's the right thing to do. Okay. Can we now move to parliament? He's saying he will not resign. That's okay. What does that mean? It means what he has said. And we also mean what we have said. So where does that leave you as a party? We'll does see. he still deserve the role of being deputy president of the party? We'll see along the way. Nick is going to sit and determine several and discuss several issues. So we'll see. I think that's PMT. Is dropping him from deputy president yeah. on the cards? I don't know. The NEC has not sat. So is this a NEC meeting that we are discussing this? The NEC meeting will sit and discuss whatever it will discuss. So even I don't know. I will be in the meeting as a NEC member and we'll discuss several issues. So you can't preempt what I don't know will be discussed by us. Mpuga is your predecessor. Mm. Have you had a chance to talk to him one-on-one -on -one about this matter? And you know the temptation that comes with being law. Yes. Probably you could mm. also find yourself trapped in the same mm. web. Uh, by the way, in some of our discussions, myself and him, he warned me about several temptations that would be thrown at me. I said, thank you, I will be alert, and I am alert. So in a sense, would you forgive him that perhaps he was trapped by the office? Yeah, to that extent. Um, but then there are also, y you know, leadership calls for certain duties. When you acknowledge that, okay, I have been trapped, I did the wrong thing, then do the right thing to say, okay, maybe if it had not been for the trap, I would not have fallen into it, but I did fall into it. Let me do the right thing and relinquish this role. Even the public would forgive you. When you read Mpuga's letter in response, he talks about witch hunt, blackmail that's been happening mm. within the party towards him. I did read Have that Have you letter. examined this? Um, again, I think we need to be honest as leaders. Because when you talk about witch hunt, a, a small Spite. family clique. Yes, he talks of the, spite. The small family clique is the one that appointed you leader of the opposition. Actually, firstly, Deputy President, the small family clique appointed you leader of opposition. And you didn't complain and say, no, this is a small family clique. It can't appoint me, Rob, I have refused. The small family clique appointed you commissioner. You didn't complain. Now, when the so-called small family clique is saying, you have acknowledged wrongdoing, you step down. Then that is when it's a family clique and, uh, you know, we need to be honest as leaders. It's important. It helps. So you want to suggest Mpuga is being dishonest? There's many things that he's, especially after that incident, not being honest about. I've told you he did say, even on the media, that he has not received this money. The spokesperson, we have information that they got the money. The spokesperson of parliament was on TV last week. Mm. It's just that it's, uh, it's your competitor. Otherwise, you would probably play that video here, saying they did receive that money and there are no apologies. That's Chris Obore who said that on TV last week. So again, there's, there's dishonesty. So... I, I know, of course, there can be a bit of panic and so on. You're trying to clean it up. I, it doesn't help. Just do the honorable thing. People will respect you for being honorable. Yeah, but where things stand now, it looks as mm. though the party is throwing in a bit of disarray. You see how Masaka is reacting. You see how... How is Masaka reacting? I was in Masaka over the weekend. I think it, there is a big rift growing in Masaka. I don't think so. It's you people who are creating it. I've been seeing you type so many things on Twitter. Maybe a close friend to the Honorable Pogan, that's okay. 
Uh, but we have been writing and saying, now Masaka is in this array. Now, you know, there is confusion in Masaka. Masaka politics has gotten messed up. I kept saying, so Simon Kagwanjala is speaking as a friend to the Honorable Mpuga, as a stakeholder in Masaka, as a journalist, as As one. a journalist. Ah. <laughs> well, <laughs> the jury is out there. Simon Kagwanjala. It is... Uh, about 20 minutes to the end of the show. Can we get to parliament? No, no, no. I, I, I know this is part of parliament. No, I this, came this to this. Honorable Mpuga, do you imagine there is a crisis brewing within the loop over the Mpuga issue? There is no crisis in NUP. There is a crisis at parliament. And now let me get to the parliamentary issues because uh, you diverted me from the issue I was invited for. Otherwise, then you guys are being dishonest. You invited me for a topic which I have read to you here. Mpuga is a commissioner of parliament. parliament. expenditure bonanza is the institution losing the accountability call. Mm. That's parliament. Let's discuss parliament. So what's happening in parliament, Mr. Simon Kagwanjala? Now that you fear to ask the question, your interest is just Mpuga and me. No, I'm no, saying, no, 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 no. let's broaden this. What's happening at parliament is extremely problematic. Number one, there's an issue with recruitment of staff which is also mentioned in the Auditor General's report. Do you, do you get time to read the Auditor yes, General's report? Yes, sure, sure. You do? Yes. No, Ugandans don't like reading. At least I do. Uh, let's assume you do. That's mentioned in the Auditor General's report. The Auditor General mentions 105 staff that cannot be identified. Mm -hmm. They are earning a salary from Parliament. Of course, our investigation shows that the figure is higher than that. But so people are hired, as we do understand it, they don't come. All of these are different things that we have gathered, and we're saying there must be an explanation to do with these issues. The leader of the opposition's office, which You're I occupy... You're picking from the exhibition, I guess. Uh, <laughs> first hand. The office that I occupy has got staff. Mm -hmm. Normally with every new leader, every new leader comes with uh, a new team. When I came in, I said... Um, so I asked the director who supervises the staff, how have these people been operating? And I've told they've been doing a good job. So I said, let me vouch for all of them for their contracts to be renewed. Work. Because when I don't produce the work that is required of me, um, whether it be ministerial policy statements and so on, you will say I'm lazy. But you're now, you know, mm. tying my hands. They said, you see, the wage bill has been hit. So we, we cannot go continuously working and you're recruiting new ones. You say there's no money. Mm -hmm for staff in the office of the leader of the opposition to have their contracts renewed. But people are distributing money to themselves. Again, that was very problematic. So there's a challenge with recruitment of staff. And there has got to be a proper explanation. There's a challenge. You, you are equally not innocent on this. How so? We gather you mm. have a sister-in-law who is working at parliament. Sister-in-law of mine? Yes. Who is my sister-in-law? Whose recruitment is also irregular in mm. a way. Sister-in-law would mean a sister to my... It's well, now you're here. Exhibition. You're the one saying it. So you tell me, who is my sister-in-law that works at parliament or whatever? Who is that? We have gathered reports. Did you, uh, now you tell me what you have gathered. Is it true or false? Oh, which sister-in-law of mine are you talking about? Of course it is false said that you have gathered information mm. that I have a sister-in-law working in parliament. Yes. So I'm challenging you to name who that sister-in-law of mine is. Is it the true name. or false I've that told you have a sister in law? It is false. Okay, great. But now you... We, we can move on. Uh -uh, don't run away from it. We are saying you have incredible evidence about it. Mention the How name of How was your publicist law. recruited as well? So have you now considered that you... Get to, if you don't have any information, you be quiet. Talk about things you know, Simon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's proceed. So you are talking about irregular recruitment. Yeah. Fine. Mm -hmm. How is it happening? How is it playing out? People are hired, again, like it's captured in the Auditor General's report. Mm. When they're hired, they cannot be identified. Because the headcount was done by the Auditor General. It's mm. saying 105 are unidentified, is my word. Because mm -hmm. if it were my word, you would say, ah, you just don't like, you, I don't know who. It's captured in the Auditor General's report. Mm. That's problematic. And we need an explanation to that issue. Mm. Uh, and I want to just show you a bit of that. When the speaker travels, uh, her official per diem is uh, 990 US dollars. She got 499 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. When she traveled for 30 by annual holiday, 30 days, 494 million. 20 days per diem to Midrand, Johannesburg, South Africa, 318 million. 30 day travel to Kenya for 30 days, 487 million. 
seven day per diem chigali 106 million and so on and so forth we are saying and about all these allegations that we have picked up i saw the spokesperson of parliament again piso bore saying when the speaker travels to the u.s a hotel they sit in her office and decide alone or on her own all these are critical issues it, it, it does not make sense mm. at all but also in some situations you're in kenya at the same time you're in kigali but how <laughs> that issue too within a period of 146 days you're being paid per diem covering 164 days but how so the possibility is actually these trips were not taken but you received the money can we have accountability for all of these very serious heavy sounding allegations of course the other one is the clerk to parliament mr adolf Mwesige. also you know per diem you're here at the same time you're in another place uh the speaker whenever she travels with her husband uh you're hesitant to take no this problem. thread very fast no problem well the big question remains whether the opposition that's meant to play oversight is also becoming complicit in the plunder good morning Unlock the secrets of insurance during the 2024 Annual Insurance Week from March 11th to March 14th at Railway Grounds. Understand policy jargon and discover the benefits of various policies. Get a one-on-one -on -one insights from industry experts to make informed decisions when making a claim. Whether you're a business owner, a family person, or an individual striving for success, this is your chance to enhance your understanding of risk management. Don't miss the climax on March 15th at Kampala Serena Hotel, featuring the Annual Insurance Innovation Awards, live on NBS Television, organized by Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda, in partnership with the Uganda Insurers Association, the Insurance Training College, the Insurance Brokers Association of Uganda, the Uganda Agro Consortium, the Uganda RE, the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda, and the Innovation Village, IRA Uganda. Driving insurance growth. Puka Dawn. Change your life with a salary loan. Access up to 400 million. And watch your dreams come true. With Housing Finance Bank. Puka Dawn. Puka Dawn. Fuka Dawn, access of dreams come true. Terms and conditions apply. Housing Finance Bank is regulated by Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund. Housing Finance Bank, we make it easy. What car do you drive? Is it a Ford? Is it a Land Rover? A Volkswagen? Is it a Honda? A Jaguar? Or maybe a Subaru? It doesn't matter what comes worldwide. Castro, it's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. It's time to get stepping, because if you upgrade your DSTV subscription now, we'll step you up to an even higher package. Respect that. Upgrade now and step up to even more action. Step up to more football. Step up to more local drama. Step up to more fun and get more than you pay for. Upgrade now and get boosted to the next package at no extra cost. Visit your multi-choice branch or agent and upgrade to step up and get boosted. Start your day with Sting. Extreme Energy. Refreshing test. Available countrywide. Sting. Life switched on from the makers of Pepsi. These holidays, you don't need to go far to find the best entertainment. Have I got a surprise for you? All you need to do is stay connected to DSTV. I'm so excited. Pick your moment of fun and share it with your family. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Overpowered. Pass the keeper, Jude Bellic goal. Because it's your moment oh. to hang out with the characters you love. That's exactly what I need to do. Whether you're at home or on the move, make it a holiday to remember. This is the final round. Ain't gonna stop me now. Because these holidays...
Welcome back. We're still having a conversation on uh, the mind-boggling revelations that are coming out of the Parliament exhibition. Well, the big question remains whether uh, the opposition that would be putting government in check is also becoming complicit in this. Well, Honorable Senyuni has been taking us through quite a number of alarming expenditures, especially in trips abroad. Uh, but the speaker has been widely mentioned. How about your colleagues? How about yourself? Because there is a, a damning report indicating that Parliament spends 2.6 billion per day, of which the LOP also takes a share. What share? There's a percentage for the LOP's office. Okay. Okay. So, and you ask how about us, and that's why even mm. we on the opposition, we are saying even if it's one of us, we must take action. But just allow me to finish this, huh? mm. uh, also to put into proper perspective, that 2.6 billion mm. shillings per day. Mm. Aside from the per diem issues of the speaker, there's money that is normally sent directly to employees' accounts, employees of parliament, including the spokesperson, Christo Bore. 1.7 billion shillings was sent to his account. Okay, And all of these are allegations are saying, we demand proper accountability. There's another one. This is assistant HR director, 2.4 billion. This is money sent, which is apparently for speakers, corporate social responsibility activities, um, donations, and so on and so forth. But how? Another one, the principal protocol officer in the speaker's office, 1.1 billion. Christo Bore have mentioned 1.7 billion These are chilies. revelations okay. in the Auditor General's uh, report. 4.7 billion. These are coming off a government system called IFMIS. Mm. Do you know that system? Yes, I do. You do? So there you are. So another one, 4.7 billion shillings. Now responding to your 2.6 billion shillings per day. Mm. You see, all of this money is drawn, okay? Another one, 4.5 billion shillings. And they withdraw it, apparently, for the speaker's activities. Which activities are these? Can we have accountability about all of these very serious allegations? But Can you we remember of just the listen, commission. Uh, and I'm going to respond to that, yeah? So we are saying all of this is problematic. And look, we have nothing, ag I have nothing against the Speaker of Parliament. I respect her and her office. I respect Honorable Mpuga and the other leaders. But we are demanding for accountability. And nobody should divert to say, you're speaking because you don't like them. Okay, let's assume I don't like the Speaker. But can, uh, which is not true. It doesn't matter anyway. But at least I respect her and her office. But can we have these accountability issues responded to? When staff, by the way, after the Kazinda incident, eh, you remember the Kazinda incident in the OPM? Right. Government issued a standing order that money to be put on the accounts of staff of government, civil servants, for field activities, should not exceed 5 million shillings. But you're seeing billions of shillings for speakers' activities. Which activities are these? Can we get to know them? Can all we have senior. proper accountability? And why is all of this money being put on the accounts of staff of parliament. Honorable Senior, you, you, you should be tasking Kosase to undertake mm. an, an investigation on this in your capacity as leader of op opposition. And, and, and they should, uh, just like we are also demanding um, for an explanation, a proper, proper explanation, accountability question to be responded to. There is also something else that is very problematic. The, the speaker as we do understand, has a radio in Bukedia called Mama Bukedia FM. Parliament gave it a contract worth 3.12 billion shillings to do Parliament work. I don't know which work that is. Now, I was on radio yesterday, and the spokesperson of Parliament, Chris Obore, got in touch to share feedback on the same, mm. as they normally do. And he said, uh, but... The issue is that money has not be, doesn't get to be paid at once, that contract. You know, I said, well, that's not even what I'm saying. Point is, at least you have ac accepted and admitted this contract was signed, mm. where procurement regulations followed. The other very problematic thing about that contract, the people who signed as managers of the speaker's radio station are staff in half office as speaker of parliament. These things are problematic, Simon. And that's why we are saying we want but serious responses to all of these heavy-sounding allegations. But they're not just arising now. They've been on for a while. Well, it's been, at least now the information is available now. Now that it's available, let's talk about it. Let's demand for answers, and that's what we are doing. Okay. As we speak, Parliament is on leave. 
Yeah, it was sent on, uh, and we are asking the speaker, please reconvene Parliament so that we discuss these issues. Also, can Parliament come out comprehensively and respond to these issues? Because we must be accountable to the public. But the money is under question mm -hmm. and being passed by Parliament. The Parliament where you sit. You see, m money can be passed. That doesn't mean it should be irregularly used. Because now the issues we did Parliament, for so example, let me ask you. Your lack of let scrutiny. me ask you this question. Mm. Uh, but we are scrutinizing now. Did Parliament pass that 3.12 billion shillings worth of a contract be given to the speaker's radio station? Did Parliament pass that? Of course not. Were procurement regulations followed? And staff in the office of the speaker are the ones signing as managers of the radio stations. That's problematic. Did Parliament pa pass all of these different things? Okay, when money is passed for different government entities, does that mean it has been passed for you to misuse it? So you can't say because money was passed for your entity, that means you should misuse it. Let's be serious, so Simon. So you're raising a red flag for an institution where yeah. you're working. Yeah, and it's my duty. The Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and the rules of procedure mandate me as leader of the opposition to keep the government in check. That's what I'm doing. Government, by the way, includes the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. So those who are saying, I am just talking, I'm doing my job. Isn't this going to put you at loggerheads with the Speaker of Parliament, mm. with whom you're meant to be working cordially? If it does, so be it. But the point is I'm doing my job. This, this is my job within the, the, the law. Eh? It's to keep the government in check. It's to demand for answers. If I can demand that Nabanja explains so about uh, Mabati, why can't I demand that the Speaker explains also? It's my job. So... No one should think I'm doing this out of hatred or whatever the case might be. I am doing my yeah, job. Yeah, but you're happy more on the speaker than your colleagues. Yeah, because... Th 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 there's also accountability issues regarding mm. all MPs in the House. Raise them. Opposition MPs are taking irregular flights, mm -hmm. and no one is mentioning this. Uh-huh, for example? There is a list that's been issued on um, Honorable Semuji Ibrahim Nganda's trips, mm. plus several other MPs who are picking money. This is irregular, isn't it? So you, you see the challenge also we have in that parliament. Every trip, just like every other little thing, has got to be approved by the speaker. Um, so it's at her discretion to determine who goes for what trip and so on. And I think that's also problematic uh, for the institution to be more institutionalized. Yeah, The speaker doesn't have to approve every little thing. Even when I'm going for a field visit to get costers, the speaker has got to approve. Can you imagine? That's, that's problematic. And I told her... You cannot, when are you going to have time to do serious things? I asked her that. I was in her office. I said, Madam Speaker, if you have to approve every little thing, including a coaster that I'm to use with the members to go to the field, when are you going to do more serious things? But you know, I told her, I actually feel for you. I feel sorry for you because you should be attending to more strategic issues as leader of this institution. But anyway, hopefully that gets to change. Yeah? So now, mm. when that gets to be the case, and members have actually 